In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are... You know what we're doing. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Now in this episode, it's time to finally dominate that MX-5 and we're doing so with a NOS install on the Honda. Now normally this wouldn't be such a hard process, except nobody was actually willing to help me. Marty, how you doing bro? Yeah man, dude, I was wondering if you can help me with my Honda. Rake, are you loving it? Of course you are. Dude, I'm just start uh, doing some work on my Honda and... Andrew Hawkins, how's the GTR, bro? Of course it is, man. Look, I'm uh, hoping to do a bit of work on my Honda today. Mechanical Stig! Oh man, yeah, the olives were delicious, thank you very much. Man, I've uh, got my Honda here and... Turbo Yoda! How would you like a trip down to Sydney, all expenses paid, to uh, work on my Honda? But, eventually I did find one very special guest. Here he is, is our tripod big enough? Get amongst it. Everybody, this is Hightower. Uh, hello mate. How you going? I'm just, I'm just so happy to meet someone else on the planet who likes Hondas and likes NOS. Right, NOS, this makes everything go quick. So, um, so we're gonna be doing this, are we gonna be able to go faster than a turbo MX-5 with a, uh, with a Honda with NOS? Not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Today we're doing a NOS install on the Honda S2000 and our only goal is to be able to go faster than a turbo snail MX-5. So what exactly is nitrous oxide? Nitrous oxide, commonly known as NOS or laughing gas, <laughs> has actually been around for a very long time and it's two parts nitrogen and one part oxygen. Now it was first used back in the 1800s for dentistry and surgery as an anaesthetic. Now I don't know about you, but I can't think of anything more frightening than having one of my molars removed back in the 1800s by Dr. Noss. Now in 1914, it was suggested that it could be used as an oxidizer in rocket motors. Plus, it could be broken down when decomposed and turned into air that's breathable. And in World War II, it was used to boost the output of plane engines. Now in automotive use, it's been very, very popular since the 1970s because you get a big bang for your buck. Now the reason you get a bigger bang for your buck is there's more oxygen in NOS than there is in the air that's in the atmosphere, which means when you add some fuel to it, you get a bigger bang. Oh. Ah! So we are down here at Itchy Barn. This is Scotty, the owner of Itchy Barn. This is where Mechanical Stig works. And of course, we've been coming down here for years. They build race cars, street cars. They import awesome stuff from Japan, half cuts. They do all sorts of crazy stuff. But not only does Scotty do that, uh, he's also the genie of the NOS bottle. Now, Scotty, can you give me a little rundown in how it is that this system is going to get stuck into the car and make us go faster? Sure. What we have here is NOS, which is a chemical supercharger. So we take a dirty big bottle out of the back, in the back of the car bring the gas from the back of the car up, inject it into the engine, and then we'll bring fuel in and inject it at the same time. These two will mix together, go into the engine, make a big bang, and we can have a rating of horsepower from 35, 50, 75 horsepower. That'll make it fast. Now, the reason that we're making more power is there's more oxygen in NOS than there is in the air that we breathe. So in a sense, it is just like we're using a chemical supercharger because we're getting more oxygen into the same amount of displacement, is that right? That's correct. We're using double the amount of oxygen being injected in because of the chemical, and then we add the fuel in, which makes the bigger bang, which makes it fast. So we're basically gonna go squirt, squirt, bang, bang, and that should get us down the drag strip faster than an MX-5, because that's the only thing we need to do. We need to smash Marty's MX-5. This will beat the MX-5. This is all we need. NOS can be run as a dry system where the gas is sprayed into the intake and the extra fuel added separately, or NOS and fuel can be mixed together and run as a wet system, which is what we're installing today. You've got your run down here is your solenoids. This is where your two jets are contained and injects it into the engine. This is your fuel line. You've got a few little bracketries and wiring for your micro switch if you want to wire it up that way. The NOS line, the relay to fire it, and the fuel lines that go to the jet. Is it possible that a Honda with NOS is just going to be too powerful? Like there might be so much power going down to the ground that we literally affect the way that, you know, like we affect the Earth's rotational pull. Um, I don't know if there's going to be that much, but we're definitely going to have traction issues. They're your jets that give you different ratings. 
Yep. So one's a gas jet and one's a fuel jet and it comes in the instruction manual what two jets you combine together to make your certain power. So this one kit will do 35, 50 and 75 horsepower. So cool, it, like it's so physical. You know, it's like that jet does this, that jet does that, like you're literally screwing in it is, how much power you need. It is very literal, yes. It's, um, you know, this is a four cylinder kit and you put this on a four cylinder, you put that jet, uh, it's 35 horsepower, you'll make 35 horsepower at the wheels. Wow, that's so cool, man. Okay, so these are the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need a drill uh, for attaching your different brackets and things. You're gonna need some spanners, some screwdrivers. You're gonna need your drill bits, of course, and then just a variety of pliers and a hammer so you can smash things in when they don't fit. Let's get to it. The first thing you need to do is find a location in your car to store the NOS bottle. We're putting ours in the boot and it needs to be angled so the valve is at the highest point. Next up, we're laying out all the parts from the kit to make it easier to install. So Scotty, we've seen some pretty impressive explosions in Hollywood movies of NOS bottles going kablamo. Um, is that actually the case when this gets hot or is there some kind of safety mechanism in there? Yeah, no, they do come with a safety mechanism. It's uh, located up here, which is a little burst valve. So once it gets over a certain pressure inside the bottle, it'll actually release and let the gas out in a controlled manner. So there's no explosion as such that you do see in the movies. Yeah, good to know. So the, the only thing that's really gonna get blown away is the MX-5. Correct. We're gonna set the whole thing up off the car so we can show you exactly how it all fits together. The bottle of NOS is gonna be in the boot. It's gonna run down this line. It's gonna come down here into the engine bay. Now everything that's blue are the NOS lines. Everything that's red is the fuel line. So that's gonna be tapped into a fuel line. And then this here is gonna go into the intake here just before the throttle body. Now Haltech ECU is gonna be controlling how and when the solenoids are triggered so that this mixes the NOS and the fuel. It goes in there, goes bang, car goes faster. That is basically how the system works. And now it's just a matter of installing the whole thing, putting it in and then smashing some MX-5. The first thing I've got to do is remove the intake so we can install the fogger nozzle. The solenoids come with brackets that allow them to be mounted in the engine bay. Then they'll be connected to power. Power and earth to the solenoid. So when the solenoids open, we have gas. Next thing you've got to do is find a spot to mount the solenoids in the engine bay. Benny, you're pretty happy to have a, have a Honda down in the workshop, mate? I hate it, dude. Really? Yeah. I thought you loved it. Bad day on a Subaru is better than any day on a Honda. Dude, I'm not even doing it. Someone, I'm, I'm not touching it. He said he wasn't going to help me, but Benny's here. And Benny's helping. He said he wasn't going to help, but he's come to help us with the fuel line. Benny! I'm just playing out. No, but Benny, Benny came to help us with the fuel line, didn't you, Benny? And with that, the fogger is in. Anyway, so that's basically the hard bit of the install done. And as you can see, that's not that hard. Now, the fogger is in, that's gonna be mixing up the NOS with the fuel, that's gonna be creating a fine mist in there, and that's gonna help things go kablamo in a good way, that is. Uh, I'd say, in terms of effort, this install is probably quite similar to installing, say, a sub. So with a sub, you gotta get your remote line, your audio wires, and then your, uh, your power cable. And this is similar, you got your fuel, you got your NOS, um, and then there's a little bit of wiring to do. So now this is going back in, and it's gonna be mad. As we test fit the system, Benny continues to not help. I'm only getting bits to get rid of this thing, man. I'm not helping. I like it when you help, Benny. Well, sorry, not happening this time. But I can, I'm filming you helping right now, Benny. I'm not helping. You're a very, very nice man. I'm not helping. Mechanical stick, everyone. I'm not helping. Even though he hates the Honda, like everyone else does, he still not appears to be helping. I'm not helping. Which is awesome. So thank you very much, Benny. I'm not helping. What a nice, that's true friendship, isn't it? to hate your mate's car and then help anyway. I'm not helping. 
That's awesome. What a legend, everyone. Mechanical Stig, there he is. Benny loves having a Honda at the shop, and I'm sure he'll continue to not help us during the day. Once you've found a suitable place to mount the solenoids, make sure you check your bonnet clearance. Next is the fun part, putting in the jets, which is what dictates how big the nitrous shot is going to be. If you're installing a wet nitrous system like us, you'll have to find a location to tap into the fuel. Or we'll check if there's a fuel line underneath because we're going to be running the That's right, yeah. Well, this is rubber anyway. here, so it's got to go down to something. So we'll have yeah. a look and see what's there. So we'll get clear up and get it on the hoist. What do you reckon, mechanical stig? I reckon it's a waste of time. Really? You're going to lose anyway. Really? Oh! oh. Team MX5! Wow! On this fancy braided line. When's wow! It, when, when's auto selling again? Oh, wow! Old Camp MX5, off you go on your picnic. Benny continues hating on the S2000 and then starts welding some Subaru parts in protest. We're putting the car up on the hoist so we can run the lines from the solenoids down to the NOS bottle in the boot. So we've just put the S2000 up on the hoist so we can investigate the best way of getting the supply line from the NOS bottle in the tank in the boot all the way to the front. Now we've seen this awesome little plastic fuel line guard here which is going to be perfect for us because we can run our NOS line through the boot down here all the way up to the front and then straight up that way. Then we're going to tap here into the fuel line, get our split so we've got our NOS and our fuel going into our mad little system up there. And then we're going to be chemically supercharging our way down the drag strip, chopping MX-5s like it's no tomorrow. It's just going to be freaking awesome. After spending some time under the car investigating fuel lines, we think it's going to be a better option to tap into the fuel rail. So I'm taking off the fuel rail because we need to tap in a fitting so we can get high pressure fuel from here over into the solenoid. So we're just gonna take this off and then we're gonna go and find a place just around the corner that can uh, tap in the bits we need. So we've got some mad, mad fuel going into our mad, mad NOS system. On this car, a hollowed out block of metal supplies pressurized fuel to the injectors. A fuel regulator on the return line helps keep the entire system at a constant pressure. We can tap into this block and install a fitting that then shares this fuel pressure with the fuel solenoid on the NOS system. After consulting with Mechanical Stig, who is still not helping apparently, we realise we probably don't need to go to a shop to get this done after all. Slight change of plan, uh, we're going to try and do it ourselves. The alloy rail is then drilled out. We got a winner. And next up, he's tapping in some thread. A fitting can then be screwed in so we can attach the fuel line. Why do you think so many people hate on Hondas when they're so awesome? Serious question. Because uh, it's mostly front wheel drive. Yeah. And no one likes getting beaten by a smaller motor that hasn't got a turbo on it. My experience with Hondas have been a real sense of you just don't get it until you try it yourself. Yep. And I think a lot of people don't even know why we're meant to hate them. They just kind of go, oh, Hondas, they're crap, because that's what the rest of the crowd's yeah. like. But they don't even know why they're saying that. It's just become like the kid that you tease at school. Yeah, that's right. And so that's why I decided to delve in. I was like, I'm going to have a go and see for myself. Our NOS system now has fuel. So we just finished tapping in the fuel feed lines from the fuel rail down into the solenoids. We're just going to prime the fuel pump, make sure everything is doing everything that it should and nothing that it shouldn't. And again. and again. Just four or five times in a row. No leaks, we're all good. The last part of the install is running the braided line for the NOS from the tank into the solenoid. The 
The S2000 comes with a plastic guard to protect the fuel lines, and we're going to run our NOS supply line alongside the existing piping. There are numerous different ways that you can trigger the NOS, including via an aftermarket ECU, a switch underneath the accelerator pedal, or a manual button fast and furious style, which is exactly what we're going to be doing too soon, Junior, when we get the car on the dyno. Make sure you check your local regulations because depending on where you are in the world, a NOS system may be illegal to use on the street. We've brought the NOS hose up in the boot and the next thing you've got to do is mount your NOS bottle and throw the safety stickers on. And that's how you install a NOS system. It took around half a day and we're super excited to see how well it performs. Okay, so there it is. That is all the plumbing done. A massive thank you, of course, to Scotty from Itchy Barn. Thank you. You're pretty excited about the Honda, aren't you? I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, just, wait. I'm so glad there's somebody in my life who's MX5 excited. MX-5 beater. Oh, MX, it's going to smash the MX-5. So, next episode, we're going to take this down uh, to Haltech, uh, tune it up, get an ECU, throw it on a dyno, see what kind of power we got, and then we're going to smoke some MX-5s. People, it's going to be awesome. Scotty, thank you again. You're a legend. Have you ever had a tofu burger? No. Come with me. Come, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something incredible. If you like Hondas, you're going to love tofu. Next time on Mighty Car Mods. Uh, Benny will never admit it and Marty will never admit it either, but they both love the Honda and they'll never tell you They've told me off the camera like listen. I mean Benny you do actually love it, don't you? He does he does he loves it. I heard him the other day saying getting rid of my Subaru oh, he's, he's trying to wreck my audio now. He's trying to wreck my audio because he knows the truth is coming out the conspiracy's over <laughs> <laughs>